the Kung Fu fist, the Kung Fu bow. We bow to our master, we bow to the sun god, we bow to everyone. Now you may not like the whole stuff what I just did, but that's okay, that's just me. Now, I used to do that, I used to do the Kung Fu bow in front of teachers. I do, I, I do like bow like this, and I bow like this, and I, I, I will bow using Kung Fu fist because I think it's pretty amazing. Um, I am, I was fortunate enough to uh, get Ron Willer on this uh, uh, YouTube channel and interview him, and I'm very grateful for um, him doing the interview. Uh, he makes my dream come true. Matter of fact, I, um, all these amazing people who have I done interview with, with all these martial arts masters. I am grateful for Ron Balicki. I'm grateful um, Dana Inosanto for doing the interview with me and um, Dennis Wan for Wing Chun. I wanted to do more martial arts too. That's just, I want to learn the different aspect or perspective. I think that for me, perspective is um, uh, uh, my curiosity uh, drive me to um, listen to people have different experiences and different ideas. You know, I want to also interview not only Kung Fu, uh, but other uh, martial arts system. I think that uh, my, I, my nature is this. I'm curious by nature. I, actually, humans are curious by nature, right? So I have this book with me, with uh, Ron Willard, and he write it beautifully. So we're going, and I'm going to share you my story on martial arts and kung fu and how uh, it got me started. Uh, the brief history of the Jaga system. The Jaga system started off in a very unique way. First of all, this is a particular style of kung fu has not one, but five founders, which are known as Mu Fu Jiao or the five tigers of the Jiao family. There are the are Zheng Lun, the oldest of the five sons, Zheng Hip. Um, I think I'm pronouncing this wrong. <laughs> Followed by the twin boys Jiao Bu and Jiao Hoi, and finally the uh, uh, youngest brother Jiao Tin, who was the last of the five tigers to pass away in 1972. Zhao Long, who is Leon, is considered the main founder of the system that first combined the technique from the both the Hongar and the Chao Ga system into a new style, which was he named Hong Tao Choi Man, uh, head of Hong Feet of Choi. This face, this phrase loosely translates to mean that from the waist up and the hand technique performed comes from the Hongar system. And from the waist down, the footwork patterns come from the Chaoga system. So in the beginning, the system was very much purely uh, Southern style. It, was, it wasn't until the Jung, Leo, Leo, uh, Zhao Leon made a trip to Malaysia that the Northern system side of the system came to play. Very good um, uh, brief history of uh, Chaoga system. Uh, I highly recommend anybody who uh, wants to uh, learn the histories and his uh, uh, Ron Willard philosophy. I highly recommend his book, and he has I think he has DVDs up. So, Gar, you know, like either you hear Jaga Hungar, Gar means family. Um, uh, the Hut Hun Fut is the Hun, and then Fut is uh, Fut means Buddha. But in our language, if you use you know, I remember back in the time, I know what you saying, what this has to do with uh, martial arts and kung fu, it has to do everything. I think that martial arts, kung fu is a way of life. The philosophy merges. It's almost like the same thing as self-help. Um, why I interview uh, vastly different, diverse people is because so often time we study a subject and we're in love with the subject. That's all we see. It's great. If you're a master, that's great, you know, but... There's so much more missing to understanding. Uh, that's why I like Jeet Kune Do. Jeet Kune Do is a philosophy of understanding. It's a base upon being open-minded. So many times, I see oftentimes when we get into a subject, uh, people don't want to because you know they have this 
uh, belief system that it it has to be this way. So back when I was a kid, uh, I think I say you know people fall in love with Bruce Lee and they look up to Bruce Lee and they watch kung fu movies. Uh, I did say I watch kung fu movies a lot, uh, and I love the uh, your uh, your fork um, the fast action and I liked it for the um, fighting art of it and it's very the you know all the martial arts all the kung fu form you know the flower there make it like there's a difference between a Wing Chun uh, Sunam Tao uh, Chum Q and Yu G is not as entertainment it's not beautifully but it's simple I Long when I was younger, I like it, you know, when I was younger, I um, I like, you know, kickboxing and I like the, I mean, I still like kickboxing or and then also shadow boxing if you don't have anyone to practice with, right? So I like it for, you know, when you do kickboxing, uh, it's really, yeah, it's, it's you, you can make people scared when you first attack, right? But I like Wing Chun for its simplicity, right? Uh, Sometimes we get complicated in things. And so I think that I look up to not only Jackie Chan, you know, I used to watch films like Power Rangers and film like uh, The Drunken Master with, uh, you know, the second one of Jackie Chan. But when I grew up, my family watched um, a dub version, but they were in Vietnamese. Uh, Wong Fei Hong. I uh, look up to Wong Fei Hong. You know, I remember uh, I used always to like copy these moves off the uh, um, movies and copy them. And but it was see, I think that copying uh, from the movie uh, when you're a little, it, it gives you a sense of um, uh, natural ability, not natural ability, but be able to copy. You know, the horse dance uh, to do that. Because I remember back then when I was uh, doing uh, the instructor, they were teaching me with, uh, you know, I was in the foot and I was doing tornado quick. It was natural. It was, um, because I saw in the movie, I, and I did it so much that it became part of me when I was little that I didn't, I, I, I didn't um, have any system to go to. And, you know, I would learn how to punch in the movies and I practice it. Um, and I learned how to do all these things until I went into, I mean, I do all sorts of things. I watch, you know, videos and I watch um, things. And but until I get into Hunt Foot, I learned the form and then the cat stance, the born arrow stance, the dragon stance, um, and all those type of things. So that's the upbringing of why I love uh, Kung Fu. It's an art. It's a, you know, it's a, it has a beautiful history behind it, ancient history. That's why I, I, I used to buy, uh, I remember when I was in the Kung Fu school, I used to buy the Kung Fu magazines. Um, and I, I used to buy and read them and I liked it for its uh, philosophy, maybe the uh, Tao, the, uh, w the way of the Tao or something. And they would, you know, Kung Fu master would like type little uh, sentence in there. I would love it and I would read it and I like also for the martial arts for weapons, you know, like uh, I like the staff form for the hunt foot system. It's pretty awesome. I think the second form of the hunt foot uh, system is pretty cool and I remember back then when I was starting to do the, uh, the short form. Short form, first form. Short form was my favorite the second form is definitely my favorite form because it has to deal with the animal system. With the tiger. Actually, short form, it was started with a short form because it started with a tiger, right? It had the tiger. Um, uh, but um, the second form is more for, they had the crane. Um, I wanted, because I fell in love with the animal way, you know, the tiger and the snake, because I would see, um, uh, Chaggy Chin, when he was in, uh, in an old film where he do all the five animal fists, I think that you guys can remember where, you know, he was uh, in the uh, Shaolin Temple or something like that, but 
and there was a ghost teaching him how to do tiger like tiger right and then they would teach him snake uh crane and then all all sorts of amazing things i fall in love with that and so i think that's why i want i think that like these amazing kung fu masters make my dream come true because like for the longest time, I wanted to be able uh, to have my dream, yes, a Kung Fu master, but I had a dream that I only wanted, uh, you know, to be able to experience, um, to interview people who uh, have experience and how they see the world, like philosophy, and they're doing amazing things, you know, and it's pretty cool and it's fun. And and I'll see you guys next time. And watch this clip on the history of what is Jaga and the history of Jaga. I think that um, there are a couple of people who are on uh, 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 YouTube who are bashing on Jaga. Yeah, they were talking. You know, they titled what is Jaga, and then they um, they weren't really doing kung fu. Uh, it was like for the Taekwondo, so it's okay. So now, I'm bringing you Ron Roller, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Uh, I would like to um, ask you, for the audience, what is Jiao Ga, um, uh, what is actually Jiao Ga? Like, what's the combination? Because there's so many uh, martial arts. I used to take a uh, Hung Fut system. You, right. you know what is Hung Fut, right? Correct. Right. Right, it's a combination of Hungar and Fukar, but now I'm into uh, Wun Chun. But can you give a little bit like description um, to uh, what is Jaga? Sure, uh, Jaga. The the old name is uh, Hong Tao Choi Mei, which stands for uh, the translation is the head of Hong and tail of Choi. Some people will say uh, a longer name, which was uh, Hong Tao Choi Mei Bak Lam, which covers all three styles that make up the Jaga. So Jaga is a combination of the Hongga, which is its base, uh, then the Choiga, and then the, uh, the Northern Shaolin. Uh, Zhao Long, the founder or the main founder, was he and his four other brothers originally did the Hongga from their uncle, uh, Zhao Honghei, who was a student of uh, Wong Kei Ying, the father of Wong Fei Hong. So our Hongga comes from Wong Kei Ying, not, not, uh, not his son, Wong Fei Hong. And then he learned. The Choi Ga, uh, from a, did uh, the Northern Shaolin in the Kibuxi, uh Temple in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and then combined all that into what you have known to what we now know as Chao Ga. It was renamed uh, Chao Ga uh, after he died in uh, 1919. Okay, you know I noticed um, a similarity between uh, Hung Fat and Chao Ga. Is there a similarity to that? Yeah. Well, there, we, um, yeah, right, yeah, we share a common system with the Hong, the Hong style, you know, with the isotonic movement. So anytime you, you know, have, I think, Zhao Ga and, and the Hong Fat, um, no, so it would be Zhao Ga, Hong Ga, system like uh, Fu Zhao Pai, anything that has any type of isotonic movement where you're pushing, it's like you're pushing against the wall, you know, and the arms are, or by the way, you're doing more Hei Gong or hard Qi Gong. Um, the uh, the punches that we have in, in the Jiao Gaz as opposed to the Hong Fat, uh, Hong Fat punches are definitely more straighter and more linear based on the Hong Gaz system because that's its base. And then you add the Fat Gar or the Buddha Palm to soften things up and smooth it out a little bit. Um, where we come in as, as far as the difference. So we have the straight and the circular. So the same punches you would see in Choi Fat, like uh, Sao Choi, Pao Choi, Cup Choi, Bil Jong or Bean Cup, uh, we share those same punches. We share the same exact punches as Choi Li Fat and and, uh, um, and the Choi Ga. Oh, okay, okay. Um, did I ask you when do you learn Jiao Ga and what made you learn Jiao Ga? Um, I started doing Jiao Ga, um, again, back in 81. But originally, I wanted to do it earlier. Um, um, detective shows like I Spy and the Avengers and the Saint, they were always doing martial arts. And they had movies like, you know, with uh, the late um, uh, Robert Coburn, uh, Man Like Flint, In Like Flint. 
And of course, watching the original Star Trek with William Shatner, you know, or what we call Shaq food. <laughs> you know, he jump across the table and fly and sidekick somebody or chop somebody across the neck. You know, I was always interested in that. And then of course, the old Kung Fu TV series with the late David Carradine. Once I saw that, I wanted to do Kung Fu. But at that time, um, you know, in my elementary all the way through high school, I went to Catholic school all my life. And, you know, my parents were like, you know, I told them, I want to do Kung Fu, I want to do Kung Fu. And they said, okay, let's let's weigh this out. Catholic school, Kung Fu, you know, all, all thoughts of doing Kung Fu. And what happened was Chinatown in D.C. at that time was really kind of a rough place to, to hang out. She wasn't going to let her, her teenage, her preteen son go to Chinatown and hang out. So what happened was I was doing, I was learning Taekwondo at the time in my neighborhood in the uh, Adams Morgan section of the city in Washington, D.C. And Randy uh, had a class in the same building that we were in, but a space above us. So one day after my class, I went up to his class, not knowing what they were teaching. I just heard these sounds. And I looked, and they were teaching Jiao Ga. And at that time, uh, you have to remember, Jiao Ga is the oldest Kung Fu system in D.C., Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, and I think Delaware and Pennsylvania that taught authentic Kung Fu. Um, and the school was very popular. So everybody wanted to know people that learned Jiao Ga back in 74, 75, 76. They don't practice anymore, but if they, you know, have done martial arts and they found this, oh, oh, oh yeah, I did Jiao Ga in Dean Chen school. It's, it's amazing how many people I've just bumped into you know, on the subway, on the bus, you know, you know, that have done Jiao Ga. It's, it's amazing. 